In this particular tutorial, you folks have the dubious pleasure of watching what I'm going to loosely refer to a bit as a bit of Jimbo drawing. Now, I can't draw for toffee, and you might be wondering what the hell is that that you've just, just, just drawn? You might be thinking it's a very poorly drawn golf club head, for example, but no, this is in fact an alveolus. And if you're wondering why I haven't said alveoli, it's because I've drawn one of these, so it's an alveolus. So, of course, if we were to sort of follow this line up and out, we'd eventually get to the nose and the mouth right where air is coming in and out of our respiratory system and this is sort of the end of that particular line we cannot let me sort of illustrate that with arrows in and arrows out and do it that way now the other thing we might be able to sort of quickly summarize here is what we have inside this alveolus once we've of course inspired or breathe in we have what we describe as an up arrow or high conch O2 and conch means concentration. So in the air we breathe in, there's quite a high concentration of oxygen, round about 20%. But there is also a low conch or low concentration of CO2. There is whatever it is, 0.04% of the air we breathe in from the external air environment at sea level in being breathed into the alveolus, right? So we've got a high concentration of oxygen in that mixture of gases, we've got a low concentration of CO2. Now this alveolus does not exist on its own. Running near it, in fact running right alongside it, is this little structure. And by the way, there would be many hundreds of thousands of them around this alveolus. And what we've got here is we have a capillary. Now please, please don't think I'm drawing these to scale. I am absolutely not, but there's my capillary there. And of course, as my capillary passes by here, this cap capillary is going to have a line of red blood cells. And you guys who are studying biology, or maybe you just recall it from GC biology, you should be able to tell me that these red blood cells are exactly seven micrometers in diameter, just as a capillary is seven micrometers in, in diameter. That's not what we're interested in today. But the point I want to make about these um, uh, red blood cells here that of course have a very a very many million hemoglobin proteins that are associated with them. What we find in here is that here we have a low concentration of O2 and we have, let's see if I can get the same pink, a high concentration of CO2. Now, before we get into what we call our diffusion gradient, I want you to realize that the cell wall of the alveolus and the cell wall of the capillary, they are both what we refer to as partially permeable membranes. Now I know that's not news to you because I happen to know for a fact that you studied that in your GCSE biology course. And of course all that means is there are gaps in those what we refer to as epithelial cells that are big enough to allow gases to move along, or molecular gases to move between them. So in other words, these gases which are in high concentration in the alveolus of oxygen, low concentration of oxygen in the capillary, they can move backwards and forwards. And therefore what we have is a diffusion gradient. So we have a diffusion gradient. Now, when we have a diffusion gradient on either side of a partial permeable membrane, what do we experience in that, in that event? We get a net movement of gas from high to low concentration, from high up or from H to L concentration. So what are we going to find that happens here? Well, of course, by definition, we're going to find that the high concentration of CO2 is going to move net in that direction. And the high concentration of O2 compared to in the capillary is going to move net in this direction. And that is what we refer to as the exchange of gases down the concentration gradient, down the concentration gradient. So I'm really going to stress that point, down from high to low, the concentration or diffusion gradient. Okay, so of course, the greater that gradient, the faster the diffusion itself, okay? So that's a really nice sort of comprehensive idea here of what's going on in this particular environment. Of course, I'm not getting really, really technical here. We're looking at the big picture type scenario, but what we can certainly say is that the, the higher this arrow goes, so the greater the concentration of oxygen, which we can't really change because the air is at the concentration is unless we take some kind of face mask and take on extra oxygen, which does happen in certain sporting conditions, especially recovery phase. But if the concentration of oxygen in the blood gets even lower, perhaps because we're utilizing more when we're exercising, then we're going to get a greater diffusion gradient and a greater net movement of gases along that gradient. Same with CO2 being produced. If we've got more CO2 
being produced because we're exercising, for example, aerobically, we're going to get a greater diffusion gradient, more CO2 breathed out. Now, this is all well and good. That's at the alveolus. But let me give you a, possibly an even worse drawing because we're now going to talk about at the muscle. So let me go see if you recognize this. Here's my first structure for you. Guess what this is? It's seven micrometers in diameter. It is the exact diameter of these little lined up chain of red blood cells in here. And of course, these are the capillaries. So I've got a capillary there, but I want you to imagine, and then, trust me, it ain't green. I want you to imagine that now what we've got is we've got muscle tissue. So my green box here, very unrepresentative. This is muscle tissue. And what we've got here, of course, especially when we're exercising, let me just check which colors I use. So here, here, what we've got is we've now got a high conch of oxygen in the capillary, and we've got a low conch, concentration of course, of CO2 in the capillary. But in the muscle, especially during oxygen, especially during exercise, we've got a low concentration of oxygen in the muscle, and we have a high concentration of CO2 in the muscle, because we're exercising, and of course we produce that aerobically through the aerobic system. We've got a high concentration of CO2. So what do we get? We get a net movement of gases down the concentration gradient, down the concentration gradient. And that of course defines diffusion down the concentration gradient. So what are we? What would we expect to hear? Well, in broad terms, in net terms, the oxygen in the capillaries will go into the muscle as a net movement, and the CO2, which is within the muscle, will leave the muscle, and it will depart in a couple of different ways, actually. One is as carbamine or hemoglobin attached to red blood cells, but it also dissolves in the plasma. So we've got the net movement of oxygen in, the net movement of CO2 out, and therefore we equip the muscle to respire aerobically because, of course, oxygen is one of the reactants of the aerobic system, and CO2, of course, is one of the products. Now, that, in a simple nutshell sense, is how diffusion takes place, how gaseous exchange takes place. Now, I want to add a little bit of extra detail here for you, okay? If we exercise, so if let's say we go for a 20 minute jog or something like that, if we exercise, what can we expect? Well, we would expect that the diffusion gradient increases both for CO2 and oxygen. Now, what this means is that if we get an up arrow increase in diffusion gradient, okay, which of course we're saying we would do um, in exercise, we would expect that we would get an increased rate of diffusion, increased rate of diffusion. So actually, you know, the rate in which gases exchanging are increased, and that causes an increase, and this is the point I've been getting at all along, an increase in net diffusion of gases. So therefore, during exercise conditions, we are able to diffuse more gas, both into the capillary via the alveolus, and from the capillary into the muscle uh, at the working muscle, for example. And of course, CO2 is being processed in the opposite direction. Now, we're going to go further. We're going to look at potentially, depending on which course you're on, we're going to look at oxygen dissociation and how that works as a process. But here, these are the basic mechanics of gas exchange and diffusion. And guys, can I leave you with a thought? If you're sitting there wondering, well, why do these gas molecules do that? Please go back to your physics in your, in your year nine, year 10, and go and have a look at kinetic theory, because that is the answer to why do they do it? Because the thing is, these gas molecules are just bouncing around randomly, and it's probability that causes this to happen. In other words, this concentration gradient just, I know I'm at danger of potentially confusing you here, but it's not like we've only got CO2 going in that direction. There is also some CO2 going in that direction, but the total, the net movement is there, is there, okay? Because these gases are bouncing around randomly. That's what we mean by kinetic theory. So we get a net movement of gases from high to low. So if you want to get back into your, your nine physics, it may just be helpful in this context. Thanks.